Hi guys, it's Paul from Modcon here. I hope you're all well. This is my next video and it's Lukegraf's Rupler 6B1 seaplane in 30 second scale. This is the top of the lower right wing and you can see the indentations for the interplan struts there and we have here the brass rod that comes with the kit and I'm just test fitting that it sits properly into those openings. Those particular openings I didn't need to do any adjustment to but of course you have to open up, sorry, open up all the connection points for the rigging and that ideally should be done before the painting and the application of the lozenge transfer takes place. Next up here we have some of the parts that are 3D printed. These are very nicely done they can be a little bit awkward to remove um, because there are probably through necessity an awful lot of um, tabs that hold the things in place. The problem is it's probably better to use a saw, maybe one with a, um, a razor blade attached and use the very fine teeth on the razor blade for this job. The problem with that is the saw I have has a really big handle and it's very awkward trying to manoeuvre it about this small space. So on this occasion I elected to use clippers. Just be careful when you detach the pieces as they can snap quite easily. They are quite strong but they are a little bit fragile in places. I didn't have too many issues though to be honest and a nice sharp pair of nail scissors can be very helpful as well. Just take your time and you'll get there no problem if you yourselves are deciding to build this model, especially if it's your first time. I'm not sure it's a kit to start your first time with but <laughs> it's a very nice model nonetheless. So you can see in the background there are all the pieces that I have satisfactorily managed to remove without breaking them. I'm now applying a little bit of dark brown oil paint to the inside of the forward fuselage. This is where the engine will sit. Um, I did have a flight of fancy to open up the cowlings and show the engine off but I elected against that at the end of the day. You may be able to see in the, um, the dish that's underneath my hand, sitting on the table obviously, uh, there's a little bit of paper with the oil paint on the paper and that's a good way to draw some of the excess fluid that comes out the tube with the paint. It's a good way to draw that fluid away from the oil paint so that you're not getting something that's really heavy and thick and really not suitable for the job. So if you can do that, draw off the excess fluid and then just a very small amount of oil paint and a fine brush and you can spread it quite easily and it will go quite a distance from experience. So I'm going to let you have a wee look at these um, processes as we go along. At the end of all this you'll see the various parts all painted up and I'll come back to you at that point.
Now the only other thing to say about using the oil paint is when you take it out the tube and place it on the piece of paper which you can again see here in the saucer on the desktop I would leave it for a couple of hours for the absorption of the excess fluid to be successful. You can also use uh, cardboard if you prefer but use either paper or cardboard to draw off the excess before you start using the paint. So here you can see some of the completed sections. Here's the engine with the propeller, the engine mount, the exhaust outlet and the first part of the radiator has been painted up as well. The forward sections of the fuselage have been finished as have the cockpit floor, the side framings and down at the bottom here we have the pilot seat and the cushion, the fuel tank, the rear bulkhead, seat belts, pedals, etc. Control column and um, instrument panel that has some transfers that can go on to, to enhance its appearance. And here I'm just removing some excess black wash from the seat belts, having painted it up and this highlights rather nicely the detail that is um, included on this part. And now the full engine, which is more or less one piece. There are some smaller parts to add on, but not very many at all. These are nicely reproduced, these parts. Just take your time when you're painting. Obviously it's not, for example, like a wing nut wings kit where you've got the bottom section and the upper sections of the engine that you can paint separately. Um, so just take your time and you should be fine with that. And this is the pilot seat with the cushion added in now. Again, a little bit of black wash in the cushion to bring out the uh, slightly better appearance of a leather cushion. And here indeed is the final cockpit assembly with the transfers added onto the instrument panel and the rather old fashioned looking steering wheel as the control column and a few other uh, PE parts, very small parts either side. And the pedals down at the bottom and the pilot seat sits on top of the fuel tank. There's also the stub of the machine gun on the left side and the barrel will be added on at a later stage once the cowling, sorry, once the fuselage, I should say, has been drawn together and the barrel can be inserted into its location on the cowling. And the completed engine as a dry run here sits very nicely where it should. And the frame lined up really nicely as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So next up is to do a dry run with the full cockpit assembly and the engine in position. Just at the back of the frame, at the back of the floor, there's a tab in the fuselage and the rear corner of the frame should there you go, fit in against that tab. And it all looks very nice indeed. So now I'm just going to attach the engine permanently and then secure the cockpit assembly into the fuselage and hopefully thereafter draw the fuselage halves together. And I'll come back to you again shortly.
So that's the fuselage half strung together and as you'll see in a moment I did a test fit for the support wire for the lower wing. Um, this would be quite a good opportunity once you've got the wire in place to tweak the protruding ends of the wire upwards by 3 degrees in order to help with the dihedral which the bottom wing, indeed both wings, need. So the sides of the floats are marked out in the instruction sheet as having a little bit of irregularity due to the moulding process. So that's why there's filler on the insides of both floats. And I've started to try and correct that on this, the left float, and then remove the rather large plinth at the back, which I've already started to do. And here's the bit I've removed already. And the easiest way, as I was trying to suggest earlier with some of these parts, although this is a resin piece and not a 3D printed piece, the easiest way to try and remove these is using a razor saw and just scoring through the resin. You don't need to go too deep. Just enough to create a crease along the desired line. And then with a little bit of gentle force, I use the pliers just to very carefully remove the tail. So, a nice clean enough break and nothing that you can't tidy up with a little bit of filler. And that's exactly what I did in due course. I also marked what side I was working on um, because it's not easy to tell once you've tidied everything up what side should be what. But ultimately this all worked out um, really well. And the next bit coming up shows the progress so far. So the floats have been tidied up, the fuselage uh, centre join has been padded out and will be addressed in due course. And now it's time to look at the breaching trolleys and the float support and they're going to be painted up in this following section.
So after an application of white and tan enamel paint, I then applied transparent ochre yellow oil paint. And once that was dry, I put a metal coloured um, enamel paint around the rim of the wheel, blackwashed it, and now this is me removing the blackwash in a manner that hopefully leaves the wheel looking interesting but slightly grubby looking because of course it would have been in and out salt water down at the shoreline uh, in order to launch the aircraft and retrieve it on its return and here are the wheels, the support and the actual trolleys themselves um, and this is them all done up a length of brass rod was inserted underneath the carriages in order to secure the wheels. And to give you an idea of how that should look, this is one of the floats on the trolley. I don't know why I only got one support, sorry, why the kit only provides one support, um, but it does. I would have thought it would have been safer to support both uh, floats, but obviously not. So now in the fuselage, the white undercoat has been applied after removing the filler from the join line. And then that was covered over and the pale grey was applied to the relevant areas on the fuselage the floats and you can see in the background there some of the tailplane pieces. The reason that I wanted white as undercoat is because the hexagonal transfers require white to keep the shades appropriate. The hexagonal transfers on this model will be lighter in shade than those of the Friedrichshafen kit that I built some time back. Um, the markings are similar in nature, but the ones with this kit are supplied by this company, Luke Graf, whereas the other ones on the Friedrichshafen were purchased from Aviatic. But both are very good. But the Aviatic ones are slightly darker in their presentation. That all looks quite tidy. <coughs> and the next bit coming up is starting to apply the hexagonal transfers and I'm starting with the floats. I cut out the shape that I wanted and then I cut it into about five, maybe six sections to make application onto the top of the float a little bit easier. And admittedly you might not be able to see the pencil outline, but I can, <laughs> just in case you're wondering if it's there or not, but it is. I always find the most difficult bit is trying to cut out the shape as close to the pencil mark as possible. But always edge on the, the, side, the side of safety and maybe trim it slightly outside that and then you can trim it down more exact once you've got the actual piece in your hand. And here is the full piece. And in the next photos you'll see it applied in sections. The walkway in the middle of the float was painted after I made sure the transfers had settled properly. And again you can see it on the top of the fuselage now as well. And like anything else that's wooden in nature in this model, the white and tan enamels were applied first and then 
once again the transparent ochre yellow. Now moving ahead onto the application of paint on the under surfaces of the wings and once again I'll leave you to enjoy this for a few moments.
Yes, I know what you're thinking. These pesky ailerons didn't want to get painted up, did they? They kept falling out of fingers. <laughs> anyway, all's well, Angel. So now I'm removing the rib tapes and I will apply a little bit of the pale shade again onto the ribs just to take away the stark white effect. You might not see much of that here, but when the model's completed and you see the underside, I think you'll really appreciate the effect that it has. And now, onto the wings. And the rest of the underwing was completed the same way as the ailerons. Now you can see the hexagonal pattern applied to the upper surfaces of the bottom wing, the fuselage and the tail. And here the top wings are on as are the floats and the tail plane. This centre section in the top wing was quite awkward because you have to draw the two wings together and sit them on the cabane strut and then complete the join and trying to sand the join with a very um, quite a heavy plane by this time with the floats on wasn't exactly easy but once that was accomplished I could complete this part here <coughs> you'll notice both floats are attached here I had a little bit of difficulty shall we say and they had to be removed and reapplied so you will see in due course some photos with only one float on but that was all resolved pretty easily so this is the end of the um, video coming up now the rigging detail will be shown and then you will see a short turntable uh, presentation of the entire model i hope you've enjoyed the build if you have, please select the subscribe and like buttons, that would be much appreciated. And I'll catch up with you all again soon. I wish you well and look after yourselves till the next time. Cheers. Bye.